where a sick person might be given an option of, or sorry, might be told when he can die, might be told that this sickness is not going to kill him. All these are due to the innovation, the research that goes into humanity. And everything has to do with education. So that gives it to my point when I say education has to do with the perpetration of human existence. Imagine without education, what would have happened to human existence? Man will have still be living in that stone age. With education, we have uh, technological breakthroughs like aircraft between here and England that used to take our grandparents some three, four months. You can do that within six hours. It's education. So any society that decides to discard education, that society is as good as that. Because education is the bedrock of any nation. Thank you, thank you so much for that definition. So, in our country, let's emphasize on Nigeria. In your opinion, is the standard of education in Nigeria improving or is it improving? I would say, come say, come say, that is not so good, not so bad. It's improving for those who really know what education is, and it's falling for those who hasn't appreciated the value of education. Let me start with the improvement. Today we have about 857 universities in Nigeria. Some 20 years ago, it wasn't up to that. Uh, when, once you have the, the, the standard index is, the more tertiary institution, the more schools you have, the, the better the standard of education. That is on one side. But again, you don't have a situation where does the number really count? Are we talking about quality or quantity here? You understand? So why people say the standard is falling? It is due to the fact that most times you will see a graduate, let's say a university graduate, not really meeting up to some Stand, certain yeah. standard because using university education, university education means universal education. As a graduate, you're expected to have a modicum of that that humanity knows and that that will help humanity whatever place you find yourself so generally in nigeria i will, i'm of the view that the standard of education is high up there like during my own time before you go to school you must be six years old but these days you see mothers taking their babies now not even kids <laughs> at 18 they call it crash or pre or something so, but the truth again is, we've not yet seen the benefit in the society. Most places, on the social media, on the streets of the country, you discover a lot of irrational people. And that has to do with the mass production. Okay. You understand, we have, like, somebody once said that, fine, 
the standard of education is high in Nigeria. But there is a period of uh, mass production and certificated ignorance. You know, you have a situation where you have so many institutions producing so many graduates, and at the end of the day, the level of ignorance is equally increasing. Yes. So the question is why? Which means the quality of education is low. Yeah, the quality of education is a personal thing. Personally, I always tell my students, as soon as you get matriculated into the university, you become a research student. You don't wait for the lecturer to tell you what to do on how to go about it. But we have a situation where a lot of people at the level of the university, they still feel happy if a lecturer does not come for, come for a particular lecture. You understand? <laughs> so, but yeah. somebody who comes into the university as a young student, and from the first day you come in, you have it within your consciousness that you are a research student. You do your research. Whenever there's any assignment, you do the assignment, and you do what you are supposed to do. And at the end of the day, when such a person graduates, he will definitely become, uh, sorry, belong to that class of educated uh, fellows and not those that will just go join the bad wagon and at the end they are given uh, certificates. Okay, okay, thank you. So how can we handle overpopulation in classes which leads to poor performances by some students who can't cope with... Um, who can cope both in secondary and tertiary institutions? Let me use this like myself as an example. When I was in the university, I, I, I had this class that we always had to attend, like the GS class. And then you see the population of people. It was, it was not encouraging. And sometimes when I go there, I have to go back home because I couldn't cope with it. And that would have affected my grade if I did not do a homework. So how do you think we can handle the situation in the university? or even in the secondary schools? That's, that of the secondary school is being taken care of. We have a lot of private, private secondary schools, okay. even primary schools, that strictly, you have a situation where they will say it's 15 to a class, and the proprietors or the management of such secondary school will keep to that. Because yeah. the meaning of teaching has to do with personal interaction between the teacher and each of his students from crutch down to the university level. Then having said that, we had a situation in the Nigerian, uh, in the tertiary institution, where it was like an all-commers affair. The, 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 the VC or the manager, sorry, the, the senate of each university were allowed to admit, admit, and admit. Some even admit to one week to the exams. And mm -hmm. with such, you have over blotted yeah. classrooms yeah. and uh, 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 a large student population contesting for the limited facilities on ground. But about uh, 10, 12 years ago now, NUC came in, and they were so strict about it. They went around various public universities, that state and federal, and they mandated, based on the facilities you have on ground, you were given quota. For instance, the university that was admitting 12,000 every year, most of those universities were given quota of, say, 4,000. Okay. You understand? And with that, we had, we had sanity in the various lecture rooms. A situation where you have a crowded lecture hall, you have the students outside. And the, the, if, there is, if there is laughter, let me put it that way, the laughter must have died down inside the hall. Some, some will just start laughing outside. Yeah. You know, that is another, de the reason. another definition of insanity. <laughs> you understand? So, but with that, we had sanity. And with that, the standard of uh, 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 our graduates improved, coupled with the fact that we now had a post-GTME that checked the so-called uh, magic grade from special centers coming into the university. Yeah. But what we've been having within the last three years is like we're going back to Egypt. Overcrowded classroom. You have a situation where the labs now don't contain a class. Yes, exactly. People do shift. Mm -hmm. You know, after two, three hours, a, a group will come in, but it's not supposed to, to be. So I think what we need to do, basically, along that line, is for us to sit down. The, the things are there. These things are there in the law, or sorry, in the books. For us to sit down, check the facility each university uh, has. How many lecture halls do you have? How many departments do you have? And that should now determine, just like what they did about 12 years ago, the number of students to be admitted, admitted. Okay. per section. 
Okay, thank you. So now another question that you answered made me reminded me of something. Is examination the true test of knowledge? I would say no. Okay. No. The, the problem we have in Nigeria is uh, we are neither here nor there. There is this contending, two major contending factors. We were colonized by the British and they left so many things with us. But we look up to the Americans for so many things also. The American system of education is such that it's very liberal. They don't believe in that two hours exam or whatever. Mm -hmm. From the first day you come into school, you have been examined. Yeah. To the last day you leave. But the British system is such that it has it has to do with seventy five percent attendance. Yeah. You just have to do mandatory text that has marks allocated for that and you have to do the exams and if you are not passing you are coming back to have a receipt mm -hmm. and things like that. But basically I see I see education at the level of the tertiary institution as uh, forming character. So we should not lay emphasis on the what is it called on examination like i personally i conduct series of tests like the way you you answer questions in my class during lectures it's okay. called mark okay and my exam question i will discuss everything well ahead of time, time. with my students okay. i will ensure most times i will ask them suggest based on what we've done based on the course outlines suggest question they will write it and we discuss it in the class and the way we've discussed it that is the way it will be because I'm not really concerned about the A grade you are making. Well, yeah. my, my major concern is, in the next two, three months, in the next two, three years, can you be able to say this about this course you made an A? Because we have okay. a lot of students that cram, pour it out, <laughs> but a week after you ask them what, it. and they will make an A, but they can't be able to say what they've made A uh, yeah. on. You understand? So, I want to go with the American system. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. You've made a very nice point. I'm going to take a break now. And then when I get back, we will continue. And I believe my audience would have one or two things to say. Stay with us. Welcome back. Don't forget, this is a talk show with Felicia Boko. And the topic is standard of education in Nigeria. So back to our special guest, Dr. Abakare, you made, said something about education um, examination not being the true test of knowledge. So now what happens in a case where a student keeps failing a particular course severely and this automatically gives the student an extra year and then there's nothing he or she can do. He keeps failing the course. At this um, situation now, what is a possible solution to this? Uh, that is where the course advisor comes in. Okay. Even though the course advisor role, just like the role of a guardian counselor in the secondary school, is not being exploited as it's supposed to be in the tertiary institution. The student is supposed to approach his course advisor and one on one, they will have a heart to heart interaction. You know, yeah. and if that is not solving the problem. The course advisor will now take such matter before the departmental board. I know, talking about most institutions, there's what is called waiver. Okay. You know, more so, there are some, there, there are some standards. If the student had scored up to 25% at any point in time in that particular course, that course is supposed to be waived. Okay. That is, by the, the, the student has to be upgraded to 40 so that he can graduate. More so, more so if the student does not have a load of carryover. If it is a situation where the student has a trailer load of carryover, that means they, they, that means there is a systemic error. Okay. Because normally there's what is called probation. You have 0 0.01 CGPA after your two first two years. After your first year, you are placed on probation. And if okay. it continues by the second year, you'll be asked to withdraw. Okay. So at the point where a student fails a particular course for two, three, four years. Mm. You understand? That shows that there's a problem with the system. You know, because the system is fashioned in most institutions, is fashioned in such a way that such loopholes will be discovered before it gets down to the point of graduation. Yeah. You understand? It helps the institution, and at the same time, it helps the student. For instance, Unilag has a unique whatever. If you are placed under probation, and they now see that after your probation, you are struggling to make it, and finally, they will allow you. You get a point of uh, graduation. 
you'll be given a letter, not statement of results. Okay. They call it non-classification of degree. Mm. And the letter shows that you've once attended Unilag between so-so and so year to so-so and so year. <laughs> you can't present the letter anywhere for anything. Wow. You understand? <laughs> and I want to remind you about your stay in Unilag could be the pictures. Wow. You understand? Yes. So that is about a school like uh, Desu in Abraka. Abraka is very strict. Okay. With, uh, with the CGPA thing. You have a situation where a student repeats in Abraka. I'm talking about Delta State University. A student repeats a class just as students do repeat classes in secondary and primary school. A student repeats if you fail or if you fail wow. to meet some to a level of CGPA, you repeat a level. Unlike what we have in other institutions, you, 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 you had 10 courses in a semester and uh, those that made the 10 courses are going through, and you that made just three out of the 10 courses, you join them and now in final <laughs> year. It's not done in Abraka. Uh -huh. So when you have such, when you drop, drop down, the system automatically gets activated. Okay. You are double monitored. Okay. So that at that level, if you keep on failing again, they will just give you a later advice. They will advise you to withdraw. You withdraw yourself. So, oh. But if you are not withdrawing yourself, that means You're on your own. they will show you the way out. <laughs> Okay. Okay, Doc, I have a question for you. Yeah. In developed countries, students are given extracurricular activities to fill in areas where they lag behind. Now, don't you think this concept should be introduced in Nigerian institutions to help students in fields they see as difficult? Yes. When you are specifically, say, Finland, Finland has a very liberal educational system. The emphasis there is not you must kill yourself to pass exams or you must get a degree. No, just like in Canada, a medical doctor in Canada is encouraged to learn carpentry, to learn other vocational skills. So you have a situation where if the, it happens in most developed countries, the U.S. have it too, from onset, you are being monitored, you are given free hands, you understand? Your place of play, probably doing sporting activities, they look at you where you have more interest. If football, hockey, yeah. they tend to develop you along that line. And when you keep on having issues, back to your question now, yes. with a particular whatever, they will try, you probably are having issues with, uh, let's say, building uh, tech now as a, as a subject now. They want to introduce you to something in the opposite direction, say sports. Okay. And if you observe that, that we know you should be moved to the sporting angle. You understand? So, but the situation where we were going to have that, when in 1987 we started the 6334 educational system, that's six years in primary school, three years yes. in junior yeah. secondary school, three years in senior secondary school, and four, uh, years. four years minimum in the tertiary yes. institution. That is, after the primary school, you go to the junior secondary school for the first three years. Within those three years, you are being monitored. If you are the type that has the brain to go for commercial subjects, you are fixed into a commercial class. Science class is the same thing. Then if you are the type that, that likes, that has vocational skill, technical drawing, woodwork, and what have you, you are taken to the vocational class. Yeah. So at the end of your JSS3 exams, you move to your area of specialization by the time you get into SS1. So after that, that is what you will now, your, your counselor in school, I'm talking about the school I attended now, that was what happened, my secondary school. Your counselor in school will now tell you these are the subjects you have to write in Y. If you want to okay. argue, they get to your, your results yeah. from the beginning. And so, okay, you had this, you had this, you had better grades in this. Do you remember the day you wrote this course, you were not feeling too far, but you still did well. But look at what you had there. And from there, we now have people who go ahead to study architecture, engineering, you have uh, the medical doctors, yeah. you have people who still come and read medicine. You understand? I had a serious case in my set there. We had a boy who was good at reading novels, but at the end of the day, the father forced him to read, to go into the science class. He did. And for several years, he could not graduate from the medical school in UI. You understand? Yeah. So, systems like that encourages everybody to be the best in the area you are best suited Absolutely. for. Yeah. You understand? Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Any other question? Uh, yes. 
Doc, thank you very much for the wonderful explanation you've given to the public on that discussion. Now, what's no. your name, please? Introduce yourself. I am Val Adiko. Okay, thank you. It, it appears that the system of education in Nigeria places emphasis or importance on a particular course, say medicine, law, and what have you. That now brought about the craving for most individuals to want to go into that course, regardless of whether their their strengths lie there or not. And at the end of the day, realize that after studying that course, they don't go about practicing that course. Now, this trend should it be upheld? If not, what do you think should be done to curb this situation? Uh, it still takes us back to the national policy on education. You, you have a situation where most times parental influence, parental influence yeah. makes for such error. You understand? And secondly, again, you have a situation where the economic realities, like I teach philosophy, all my degrees are in philosophy. Okay. I've been a philosopher all through my life. You have a situation in my own department where students, 80% of the students that comes in there will tell you they, want, they wanted to read law. Why? Because law is a professional course. Law has definition, let me put it that way. They feel those courses that don't have definition, just like what you said, medicine, engineering, and non whatever. So most times we laugh as such, whatever. You know, because uh, it's not everybody that can be a medical doctor. Neither is everybody that can be an engineer. Of you understand? Course, yeah. But again, the, the policy on education is still a problem. And also, the admission policy. Because a lot of people will tell you they are going to read engineering, but they found themselves in industrial physics. And because of the problem with jam, they want to accept such. We have a lot of students stuck in various departments of mathematics, exactly. stuck in various departments of ICH. When you have one-on-one -on -one with them, they will tell you why they were there. You understand? And again, somebody once said, uh, determination is more than experience. We have people who study the uh, Igbo, for instance. People who study the Kanui, working in the banking hall. Exactly. You want to say, what has happened to the professional bankers? Those who went to the university to study so, yeah. banking and finance. The harsh economic reality. Nigeria is not structured like a Saudi Arabia. Nigeria is not structured like a Libya under the days of Gaddafi. That when you come in into the system, you know where you are going to walk. You understand? We had that in the 70s, early 80s. A situation where as you are leaving school, you are in the NYC camp, companies like Leventis, Square, the military, the paramilitary forces, they will come look out for you from the NYC camp and tell you we want you to build a career in this line. And before you say, Jack, from your service, whatever, that you dreamt of while you were in school, you've already started actualizing it. So, look, isn't there something that could be done to, you know, take us back to that? Because I think it is better. Yes, it, it, it can be done. That it, it can be done. Something can be done. But the problem I'm having is I wouldn't want to go into some very topical issue. The problem we are having now is the long trend of corrupt activities we've had amongst those that are supposed to lead us. Like, when you sit with this, uh, I've been privileged to sit with policy planners. Everything that will make Nigeria, okay, you are working, you said we are studying economics now. And we know uh, a country like Ethiopia, in the next five years, had asked for a hundred economics graduate from Nigeria. You understand? We have, we have policies that we now say, okay, you should know that when you graduate, you'll be going to Ethiopia. You understand? We have that on paper. But why is it not being actualized? The question is, they've eaten our tomorrow for the sake of their today. I'm talking about the political dealers, sorry, the political uh, leaders we have. And that is why it's like, okay. fight for yourself. That is what is happening in Nigeria. And everybody struggles on his own. Nobody wants to know if there's a government policy somewhere. Go to school, do what you're supposed to do well, okay. and you start attending 
crusades and revivals and whatever. <laughs> so that you well, you, you actually, you actually right because personally, I have had that experience. I, I was admitted for microbiology, and then I found myself in zoology, and then I wasn't interested. But one way or the other, now I'm in the media. That wasn't what I studied in school. But I'm going to take a break right now. <laughs> so my is the name of the game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take a break right now, and when I get back, we'll continue. Stay with us. <laughs> Welcome back. This is the talk show with Felicia Boko, and the topic is still standard of education in Nigeria. So back to you, Dr. Chris Abakare. Now, I want to ask this strike, strike, strike. You know the strike delays students from graduating on time, right? So what causes ASU strike, and how can it be stopped? The cause of ASU strike is bad governance. To stop ASU strike, we need good governance. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Quickly to add to that, as we speak, we have bills before the National Assembly. They've already passed bills establishing 80 new tertiary institutions. 80, as we speak. One was it recently passed. The, the motion that was moved by our own senator, Victor Ume, the senator representing the senatorial yes. district, and for a university of education to be established in Aguleri. And logically, commonsensically, you have a situation where the ones we have now are not properly funded. And you are now saying you want to establish more. And you expect those who labor there at night not to fight. You know, so the problem has to do with bad and good yes, governance. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, thank okay, you. I think I'll, I'll come in, sir. Good afternoon, sir. I am Gozier Sulu Chuto. So I think I'll be debating a bit, in, but still in the academic education sector. Now, when it comes to, I really want to talk about what affects us as students. Now, uh, you are a lecturer, sir. Uh, the question is this. How do you get to handle uh, the female students that are interested <laughs> on you as a lecturer? Now, why I say it affects us uh, much is that we are guys. We don't know how to use our body to be men because we are not homosexuals. So, but the girls now tend to get more marks in the academic world, and we, we are just being frustrated. The only thing we can do is to carry on, and we don't want to carry on. Gozi, I understand, yes, I understand. Sir. What, what well, it's two ways. Okay, sir. There is an old age-long tradition that male lecturers sexually harasses the female lecturer, uh, sorry, female student. But it's not the other way. Female student sexually harasses le male lecturers. <laughs> oh my you God. understand? And I will always encourage my students do the right thing at the right time. And if you feel there's, there's provision for remark, if you feel your grade is not what you are supposed to be giving, you ask for remark. When you do that the first time, whoever is behind your tribes will sit up. You understand? The okay. university is a big place. The okay. polytechnic is a big place. You don't need to look at what others are doing. Go there, do what you want to do, and get out okay, of Okay, thank place. you so much. So um, last but not the least, what is your advice to students, like especially jam bites out there, who have written jam severely and it hasn't favored them, and still they want to get into the university. You know, some of them would give up, but what is your advice to them? Uh, it's not everybody that is meant to be in the university. Some are meant to be in the polytechnic, some college of education, and some are meant to be traders. So if a trader goes up to that level, it's just like using uh, the ability to climb a, a tree to judge a fish. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. So when you do jam, write jam for second time, third time, you now ask that person how did he make his O level? If he had gotten his requisite requirement in the O level. If he made his O level well, that person should be advised to go lower. Either start from the NC level, the College of Education, or okay. Polytechnic. Okay, thank you so much. It's been a wonderful time with you. Thank you, Dr. Chris Abakare. Thank you, all my guests. You are all amazing. A big shout out to Cheleku Hotel and Suites for being partners to this wonderful talk show. We have come to the end of the program. Don't forget, it is a talk show with Felicia Boko. And the topic is standard of education in Nigeria. So we'll get back to you next time, same time, same station. Bye.